Welcome back, everyone. This is Studio 76, home for your entertainment. I'm Fife Lavalle. I'm Darius Skelton. So the end of the world is supposed to be here, I don't know, next month, something like that, yeah, 2012. Like 2012, so not next month, next year, but yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. We're all going to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you know, Ben Davis is going to give us an idea on some video games that give us a whole different perspective on the apocalypse. The semester is over, and while a couple of good games are releasing in December, I want to talk about the five biggest games of next year, chosen by me, and placed in alphabetical order. First, Bioshock Infinite takes players to the skies. While some elements of Bioshocks 1 and 2 will be noticeable, most of this game is a completely new beast, with features like player dialogue, time travel, and a semi-open world. Although it may get delayed, again, Diablo 3 is a dungeon crawling RPG with loads of customization and diversity, now, Blizzard is known for holding games until they are perfect, and Diablo 3 will be no different. 343 Studios has taken over the Halo franchise, and now that we've seen their remake of the original, it's time to see what they've got with Halo 4. The Last Guardian was supposed to release in 2011 and 2010. Now Sony promises 2012 for this artistic marvel in video game form. Players control a young boy who is trying to help a giant griffin-like beast escape captivity. There will be tears. Finally, Mass Effect 3 will be the final showdown between Commander Shepard and the Reapers. BioWare added a whole new multiplayer element to this game and players will get to see the consequences of their actions from the first two games. Be sure to check out Warp Zone Show on iTunes to get all your gaming news over the break. For Weber State News, I'm Ben Davis. Those look like some pretty intense games, D. Totally intense. And, you know, Ben is a video game master. You know, he does everything. No, he's not. No? No. Well, he, doesn't know, he doesn't know what he's talking about. So, uh, <laughs> I, play, I play the drums, though. So, that's drums the kind cool. of game. I don't play video games while I do, but I'd rather play the drums. You ever seen Step Brothers? No. Okay, never mind. Uh, he just messed up everything there. <laughs> so, but... I, I, I like playing Guitar Hero, though. I didn't ask. And, and Rock just, Band. I didn't ask that. I just asked if you... Sorry. So, well, if you have, uh, you know, wanted to learn the drums, Griffin Anderson's got the scoop. Sweet. All right. That was the intro to Down With The Sickness by Disturbed. Um, my name is Griffin. I'm going to teach you how to play that beat. It's actually really simple. It does take a little hand-eye coordination to get, to get good at it, but it's really easy. Um, the main beat of the entire beat is just... <laughs> That's the entire beat on both your hands and your feet. Um, with, the to with your hands, you're going to be switching between toms. So I'll play it for you a little bit slow, and then I'll speed it up as I go. But here it is, slow first. That's the beat. It's, uh, slow, here it is a little bit faster. beat with the hands like I said the same beat with the feet and you need a double bass pedal or two bass drums in order to pull it off so it's just that's it the entire time so here it is both the hands and the feet together again uh, slow first so here it goes Okay, that's the beat at medium speed, slowest speed. Now here it is up to full speed, and then I'm probably just going to take off into the rest of the song. Oh, wow. 
that was down with the sickness and thanks for watching me my name is griffin i hope you learned something and at least were entertained by me playing drums check out griffin's full link um version of that song on youtube or www.youtube.com slash user slash weber state news very cool so Watching Griffin play all those drums, it looks like there's a lot of exercise dealt with all the hand movements, the leg nah, movements. No, 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 not really. No? It's not that much. It's easy. I've done that before. I played that song how many times? Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah you think you're cool because you're in better shape than me? I didn't say that, but I mean, by the looks of it, yeah. So, uh, Ouch. that's just me. <laughs> well, <laughs> woo! Ouch. All right. Well, John Coyle knows some guys who do some pretty extreme stuff, and they're pretty in pretty good workouts. And you should probably ask him about that after. Yeah. Yeah. I should check that out. Hello, and welcome to John Point Zero One Three Two Four Five Six Eight Nine Five Six Three Two Eight Nine One Seven. <laughs> John Point, all those numbers through one six was already taken. So actually, we had to put a repeating sign over the one seven too, because just. We, one seven without repeating was already taken as well. It's kind of weird. Anyway, in today's episode, which also happens to be the only episode ever, uh, we're focusing on obscure sports um, because it's the only thing we can focus on, really. Uh, it's specifically a sport called the steeplechase. It's a track and field race where the competitors run about two miles and jump over barriers and into water pits. <laughs> if this sounds familiar to you, yes, it is the same as the horse race. <laughs> I mean, someone somewhere was watching a horse race and thought, hey, you know what would be fun? If we did that with people. <laughs> people love jumping over three-foot two-by-fours when they're exhausted. It's what they're known for. So does this race ever go wrong? The second guy was a freshman. <laughs> I didn't think you were supposed to fall, but I sure don't want to look like an, an idiot. That guy did it. The good news, though, is this school is really well known for their swimming and diving program. <laughs> the next guy had a little more un unorthodox technique. Yeah, he didn't get accepted to Harvard. Guy didn't even jump. He's like, hey, I just, I should try and run through it. It's a revolutionary, I'll win. Uh, at least he fell on the barrier, though. Check out the next guy. Keep the gap leads from Martin. <laughs> Ow! I don't even have anything to say. Let's, uh, let's just watch that again. Here he's thinking, one, two, three, Joe, my face, ow! Oh, that was literally the opposite of what I had planned. I was planning to jump, and I fell and hit my face. Well, I really wonder, though, if he's, if he's all right. Nope. I don't, he doesn't look all right. Looks like he broke his face, which is kind of surprising, right? Yeah, no, it's not. Um, well, that does it for John Point Zero One Three Two Four Five Six Eight Nine Five Six Three Two Eight Nine One Seven. Repeating. Uh, we'll see you never again, probably, because that number is way too long for me to say again. Goodbye. You know that segment reminded me of uh, another show. Oh yeah, what show? Uh, cops. Oh, I think. Cops. Cool. You ever seen Cops? Yeah. No, you haven't. No. No. I've seen him chase you. <laughs> True story, man. <laughs> man. Oh, ouch. Sucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what will happen. Um, I think I'll just remember it when I go to sleep tonight, the real show. I think it was on MTV or something. Cool. Well, speaking of famous shows, there's someone here at Studio 776 who's on his way to stardom. And he's going to have his own cooking channel. Who? Steven. One more time, one more time. Steven. Sexy when he does that, huh? I know. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, he makes some fantastic tasting meals. Um, well, I, know. I don't know if it's fantastic, but I never tasted it. But have you? No. They're pro supposedly pretty good for college students, though. Good thing we're dropouts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so here we go, Steve. Get it, dog. Hello, Wildcats. 
This is Weber Cooks, and today we're making a rice dish that is really easy to make. And there's different flavors that you can get. This one here, you just dump the rice into the thing, pull the packet out, and then take two teaspoons of butter and put it in the dish. We'll put it in the microwave for one minute. And while that's cooking, we'll just get the package ready to open. And that's done cooking. We'll pull it out of the microwave and we'll stir it up to get the butter to coat all of the rice. And when that's all done, we'll pop it in again for another two minutes this time. Now that that's done, we'll pull it out. And you want to make sure that if you're using a glass container, that it's Pyrex or any um, bowl that's microwave safe. And we'll add two and a half cups of water to this. And then we'll just stir it up a bit and we'll put it in the microwave again, this time We'll set it for 20 minutes and that will make it come out great. And now that it's cooked for 20 minutes, you have this hot dish that you can eat that's made with rice and it costs about a dollar. And I'm Stephen Reed and this was Weber Cooks. He's on his way. He definitely is. He, he's, he's got it all. Who's Emerald? <laughs> Bam! <laughs> Dang. Anyway, that makes me really hungry. Sports. Hungry for sports, yes. Nice Let's get to the man stuff. About uh, time. I totally agree. We need man stuff. So that's our time. Yeah. So coming up on Weber State Sports, we'll give you what Damian Lillard did to a top NCAA basketball team and who was picked for the Big Sky Welcomer of the Year, Newcomer of the Year. Jeez. Oh, that does.